Hi, everyone. Welcome to Mini Scroll, the daily internet culture podcast bringing you the biggest stories from social media, the creator economy, and the digital space every Monday through Thursday. I'm your host, Lauren Meisner, the founder of the youth digital media brand Centennial World. Welcome back to Mini Scroll, everyone. Thank you guys so much for all of your love and listens on Let the Girls Game. The final episode went live yesterday. It was such a successful series. I had the best time doing it. And it was really exciting for that topic to specifically to be our first, I guess, foray into mini series. But I am excited to get back to regular schedule where I'm doing mini scroll every day, including Wednesdays. But with that being said, let's just get right into the stories because I have three stories for you guys and one of them is pretty big. (laughs) Okay, so the first story that I have for you guys is that TikTok and Twitter is being overrun with Kamala Harris ex brat fan edits. So after President Joe Biden's recent performance in the presidential debate, many Gen Z voters are calling for him to step down, James Charles included. We covered that earlier this week. (laughs) As discussions continue about who should take Biden's place if he were to step down, Gen Z is rallying around Vice President Kamala Harris. Not necessarily for her policy positions, but more so for her overall vibe. And they are calling themselves the (laughs) K-Hive. So over the past week, X has come a light with posts, videos, and fan edits about Kamala Harris. As more of these posts start to circulate, a few fan favorite quotes have begun to emerge. So people are taking these quotes of her that she said in different speeches and things like that and like overlaying them with a brat filter and like with brat in the background, like different songs from brat. It's so funny. So the one that is like the most viral is from a 2023 speech She quoted her mother with this line, quote, you think you just fell out of a coconut tree? (laughs) She was emphasizing the importance of learning from history, but out of context, obviously that quote is kind of insane. And so people are like loving it. And I think, so the first one that I saw was her with that quote and it was mashed together with Apple from Brat. So I feel like that makes sense. Like to me, that actually kind of aligns (laughs) because Apple is all about generational trauma, like the apple doesn't fall far from the tree, talking about falling out of a coconut tree. Coconut tree? Yeah, you just fell out of a coconut tree. (laughs) Anyways, so I feel like that kind of like goes together. But another favorite quote that is circulating is one that she actually repeats very often, which is, quote, what can be unburdened by what has been. And then they're like mixing these quotes and these brat filters and songs like with clips of her dancing and just being like funny. (laughs) I don't know. It's actually the most insane thing. I can't describe it. Like it's actually almost impossible to describe in sentences out loud because you just have to see it. But if you are online at all, especially if you're on Twitter, you have absolutely seen at least one of these in the last few days. It is everywhere. So I actually think if you are a brand that has access to, I guess, commercial sounds, because that's part of the problem is like so many brands, if you're verified, you don't have access to like the regular sounds. But if you're not verified or if you just have access to Brat in general, you should make the like a fan edit like this. But instead of Kamala Harris, obviously, you should make it like you know your product your service your team something that's like relevant to your brand like put the filters over make like a fan edit a brat fan edit in the style of these Kamala Harris edits it would be so funny and I feel like it would pop off the next story that I have for you guys speaking of X and popping off Trish Crave is the latest pop culture update account, which is specifically dedicated to updates about Trisha Paytas. Okay, Annabelle found this account. When she found it, it had like 800 followers. It was so new. It was so underground. And only in the last like 24 hours has it really popped off. And it's still like very niche. Um, It doesn't even have 10,000 followers yet, but it's about to blow up for sure. And she was like, I literally can't believe you did not start this first. I can't believe someone else started this. Okay, so Trish Crave launched on Twitter in mid-June, but it started getting more traction just this week. Trish Crave is basically the exact same as Pop Crave. 
down to like the branding, the style of posts, the way that they write their captions. Like it sounds like it's right from the team of Pop Crave, but I feel like if it was, they would say that in the bio, like it would say from the team, like from Pop Crave or whatever, but it doesn't say anything. I think it's just like a fan. So the pinned tweet at the top says this page is committed to delivering updates on all things surrounding the queen of the internet, Trisha Paytas. Follow for coverage of breaking news from the famous Just Trish podcast. We will also be covering content from Trisha's friends and family. Okay, so like an example of one of the tweets that they've posted. So one hour ago, they tweeted, Katy Perry enthusiastically comments on Trisha Paytas' new video. Quote, oh my God, I'm going to send you the song. Please do a reaction vid. And it's like a screenshot of Katy Perry commenting this on Trisha Paytas' TikTok, I believe. So it like it looks exactly like Pop Crave. It's so funny. And you guys know, I mean, if you listen to this podcast, you know about Pop Crave. But for anyone that somehow does not, Pop Crave is like one of the most popular Twitter accounts right now, at least popular in the sense of like the zeitgeist. Like it actually makes a difference to culture. And they just post these like rogue celebrity updates and, you know, and a celebrity like Camila Cabello will like post a new selfie on Instagram and they'll put that on Twitter and be like, Camila Cabello stuns in new photo. (laughs) Like they're just such mindless pop culture updates, but it's so funny. And every once in a while they do break news. And I know that a lot of music managers and record labels and artists uh, send information or tips or press releases to pop crave because they want them to tweet about you know when this new artist releases a single or whatever because like they're actually quite influential they have so many followers and they're one of the only twitter accounts i feel like now especially after elon musk like destroyed the platform that is still like incredibly relevant like they're actually super successful so i think it's gonna blow up because annabelle found this literally yesterday it had like 800 followers and now they have almost 7,000 followers and trisha and Moses both followed the account yesterday. So now that they've followed it and if they start like retweeting it or reposting them or whatever, like they're just going to blow up. So ground floor right now, (laughs) go follow Trish Crave if you want to be one of the first. Okay. And the last story that I have for you guys, this is the kind of big one. So I don't know if any of you guys have seen this. It only came up for me yesterday on my For You page. But it is now like blowing up like crazy. So TikToker has called out the beauty brand Poppy Cosmetics for ghosting her in the middle of her internship. So creator I Got Dumb Bitchitis, whose real name is Olivia, on TikTok went viral earlier this week when she made a video about how she was ghosted while interning for Poppy Cosmetics. Poppy Cosmetics is not affiliated to Poppy the soda brand, just to let you know. There was a lot of people in the comments who were confused about that. So Poppy was created by a woman named Nikki Nauman, and they sell colored cosmetics. Um, In Olivia's video, she said she started interning for them in March, but a couple days ago, she, quote unquote, and this is presumed to be Nikki because she does mention Nikki later, but she doesn't mention her by name yet, but she just keeps referring to like she. So presumably Nikki, but could have been someone else on the team. She said she took Olivia out of the group Slack chat. So Olivia said she texted her asking what's going on and she didn't get an answer. And then Olivia sent a second text after a few hours and she realized that she was blocked on iMessage. Olivia said she then sent her an email and this is when she started getting worried because she was doing this internship for college credits and she was like, I won't graduate on time if I don't get these credits. Uh, Olivia woke up the next morning, her email was unanswered and she noticed she had been blocked on TikTok, blocked on Instagram and the company account also blocked other associated accounts to Olivia's. So like when you block someone on Instagram, it will block them and all the other accounts that they own or like manage. But she said they also blocked her like college equestrian account and that wasn't like it's not like her account it's like the college's equestrian account that she does have access to but she was like I don't know how they would know that I don't know I'm sure it's just like some Instagram like tie thing and then she also said she noticed she was locked out of the company TikTok account the day before but I guess I'm presuming that she noticed that the password had changed to the TikTok before the Slack chat like before everything happened and she was like I just kind of thought oh maybe there's like a new intern we needed to change the email like whatever So Olivia was like, I've been ghosted and blocked on everything. I don't know how to get a hold of anyone. Olivia said she's, yeah, been ghosted and blocked on everything. And so the only way that she kind of knew how to get their attention was she tried leaving a bunch of one-star reviews on their Amazon page. 
And she also said that the day before she got blocked on everything, Nikki, who she did name this time, texted her at 4 p.m. asking Olivia if she could make some content. Olivia said she could later in the week. And then Nikki said, oh, yeah, that's great. Totally okay." So, you know, there was no indication. That was like the last communications that she had with her. And then she was just blocked on everything. So, like I said, this video blew up. It has 4.5 million views. And Poppy's social media, understandably, was flooded with comments about it. So the brand turned comments off and I saw on Reddit, some people said that they removed all the content that featured Olivia as well on TikTok. I wasn't able to like fact check that, but that is what I read. And then they issued a response on TikTok yesterday in two text slides. So it says, some of you may have seen recent TikTok posts from a now former intern about the former intern's brief tenure with the company. Unbeknownst to the company at the time, the former intern interviewed for, commenced, and engaged in the internship. The former intern was seeking university credits for the internship, which was not disclosed to the company until May. In May, the company was also advised by the former intern that the university required the former intern to complete a document demonstrating that the former intern complied with the university's requirements to receive internship credits. The former intern, however, advised the company that the former intern failed to comply with the university's requirements for receiving internship credits, specifically the number of hours required by the university each week. Notwithstanding the former intern's failure to comply with the university's requirement, the former intern requested that the company execute the document and to miss represent to the university that the former intern complied with the university's requirements for credits, something that the company would not do. As a result of the former intern's recent posts and under a full reservation of the company's rights and remedies, the company reported the former intern and provided documentary evidence to the university. With the company's full cooperation, this matter is now being handled and investigated by the former intern's university. The company has been happy to cooperate with and fully supports the investigation. As a result of the ongoing investigation into the former intern by the university, the company will not provide any further public comment until such time as the investigation has concluded. The company, however, was compelled to make the statement to correct the public record. The company appreciates your understanding. Thank you. Okay, so essentially what they're saying is that Olivia took the internship, didn't tell them that she needed college credit. That's actually happened to us one time before, but I mean, it's usually fine. Like it's just, it's just like a number of hours thing. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's different at in the States. Maybe it's different at her university. We were just like, okay, we can just make sure that you intern for X amount of hours every week for X amount of months. Like that was all it took for us to like meet that requirement. Um, but I understand feeling a bit blindsided for sure. And I understand not wanting to go through with the internship if Olivia was not able to complete those hours. And so, you know, you as a company don't feel comfortable lying to the university. Like I, I get all of that. I think where people are like, okay, but (laughs) is that you communicate that to the employee, to the intern, you don't just ghost them on everything. So that's where there's like something that's not adding up. So it's really confusing because if this is what they did, if they just, you know, got uncomfortable and instead of communicating that with her and terminating her internship, they literally did just ghost her. I mean, yeah, that is like wildly unprofessional. We're at this like weird place right now in professional corporate culture where, TikTok has almost like democratized it in a lot of ways and given the worker, like the average worker, a lot of power in a way that we didn't have previous. And that's amazing on one hand. But on the other hand, like I do worry. I just worry that there's a lot of gray area in a lot of these stories that we see on TikTok, whether it's someone calling a brand out for I don't know, a faulty product or bad customer service, or it's, you know, a former employee like this, which we've seen many times as well, calling out a former employer for something. I think sometimes in these stories, there can be enough gray area that it's going to possibly like flip the other way on the person. So like, like Olivia is getting a lot of praise and like a lot of support right now by the general public, because like, obviously that is a horrible thing to happen. You just getting blocked and ghosted by your employer is horrific, 
But I can already see in her comment section tons of people being like, oh, the brand put out a statement and like arguing about like what was actually unethical about them doing this if she was asking them to lie. And then other people commenting saying that Olivia was agreeing in some of the comments or like admitting in some of the comments that she had asked them to lie. And I didn't see those comments. But either way, a potential employer could see all of that, could look in the comments and could make an opinion about that person and how they will behave in the workplace based on those comments, even if they're not factual. Like I saw tons of comments saying that she had been admitting to it, but I never saw those comments. Like I never saw her admitting to that in the comments. It goes back, I think, a lot to like our concerns around media literacy. I'm not concerned about people using TikTok as a platform to speak out about things. I'm concerned about the receiver, like how they are going to interpret that and the consequences of these people who are speaking out and using this platform to their advantage in a way that we haven't been able to in the past and how that might just come back and bite them in the ass even harder. So that's all I will say about that because I have no idea what's going on in this situation. This situation is so confusing, but I still stand by the fact that like if she was blocked and ghosted without any proper communication by her employer, that is that's horrible. That's horrible. But the story has already been twisted so many different ways in the comment section, in the reaction videos, that that's what I'm trying to say. Like the narrative can get away from you so quickly when something goes viral. And that's why sometimes I do feel like unless it's like absolute worst case scenario, like keeping it offline and trying to deal with it privately is sometimes the best case scenario. And I think because we have this platform of TikTok and we know that if we post things, it could go viral. If something like really bad happens to you, you could post it and it could go viral. And, you know, you could have that chance to say your piece, to get a bit of justice, no matter what the situation is, it can feel empowering to do that. But I just don't trust that the people in power are going to actually be affected by that all the time. And I don't trust that it won't just come back and like, you know, bite us harder in the ass is basically what I'm trying to say. Anyways, guys, that's it for mini scroll today. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for being so supportive of this podcast. I hope you liked this episode. Please remember to rate, review, and subscribe. It means so much to me. And I will have a deep dive for you guys tomorrow, and I'll talk to you on Monday. Okay, bye.